he became Rhode Island's 58th governor at noon on Tuesday. Officially, the planning for Lincoln Chafee to take the reins at the State House began nine weeks ago. Unofficially, it had been in the making for nearly four years. The seeds for a run were planted when the man who's now the governor's chief of staff, Patrick Rogers, wrote Chafee a note back in 2006, right after he lost his Senate seat to Sheldon Whitehouse. And this is a true story. He wrote me a note I found it the other day uh, going through looking for something else right after I lost in 06, in November of 06, saying you ought to think about running for governor in 10 as an independent. And uh, then we had lunch uh, months later and he continued to say opportunities there for an independent uh, run for governor in 10. Chafee, of course, would leave the Republican Party to run as an independent and squeak out a win in a four-way race. At a news conference the day after his victory, the governor-elect gave the first indication that his cabinet choices might not follow conventional political thinking. You can bring in the best people from all the parties. I intend to do that. And uh, working with everybody without any partisan affiliations, I think it's going to be a benefit. We'll see. Fast forward to two months later. Are there some days when you wake up in the morning and think, this is, this is quite a job I have to do? Well, uh, to be honest, the best part has been the talent that has agreed to come in and help uh, face the challenges we have here. And it's just a terrific team that's agreed to come together and uh, try and get Rhode Island back on our rightful place. In a wide-ranging interview with the Hummel Report at his transition office the week before he was inaugurated, Chafee talked about his first cabinet choice, Richard Leach for Director of Administration. Leach is a former lieutenant governor and lobbyist who ran unsuccessfully against Chafee's father, John, for Senate in 1988. Link Chafee says he got to know Leach because they served on a national board together that would meet in New York City. Richard's one of a kind, enormous energy and a good sense of humor. And so uh, it, that was one of the first meetings we had after getting elected. You had also said, you know municipal government is mayor, you certainly know the national scene is senator. The state house and the governor's office is not something you know a lot, so there is a little bit of a learning curve. Yes, and that's why Richard Leach was so important. He knows every member of the legislature. He's he worked in the state house. He's lieutenant governor, uh, so that that was a big part of that because that is a gap in my uh, experience, having worked never been really in the state house. Chafee says he's not backing off his proposal to broaden the state sales tax by charging one percent on some now tax exempt items like food and clothes. In fact, he wants lawmakers to pass it this spring before the fiscal year ends. In our interview, though, he acknowledged the political reality of the plan. It will be ultimately determined by the legislature because they hold the votes, and although you're not a Republican, you're not a member of their party either. Uh, I know you're trying to bridge that gap. What has the leadership, you've had discussions, maybe not extensive, but have you had this talk with uh, Leader Fox and Senate President by the weed? Yes, and they remind me, we have two-year terms, and uh, that's very important. These people are going to have to stand for election in two years. It's a tough vote to take to uh, broaden I mean, the in sales the tax. Is they have to go back and answer yes. for a tax Yes, increase. yes, in this tough, tough climate. We talked about during the campaign. That's a, that's a reality. I understand that. The governor says one area he won't be pushing for cost savings is the long-talked-about idea of regionalizing Rhode Island's municipal government. He doesn't believe the numbers add up. You have to look at the facts. Are we going to save a lot of money by regionalizing? And the facts do not support that. Fairfax County, where I lived when I was a senator, has a million people. It's the size of Rhode Island. One school department, Fairfax County School Department, one fire department, Fairfax County Fire Department, one police department, Fairfax County Police Department, one planning department, Fairfax County, for the size of Rhode Island. It was a million people. And their administrative costs are not that different when you pool all our uh, 39 cities and towns, our administrative costs. So you're not sold on I'm not sold on it. What concerns you the most when you take over a week from today? Well, the immediate issues are the budget and we're, we're talking right now about the school system. That this is, this is the, my top priority, having good schools, because that helps move the economy forward. Statewide. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm, 
I'm, I'm uh, looking optimistically at our uh, that our, our place in history in Rhode Island. We uh, we're due. We're overdue. And there's a lot of good people coming together, and I do think we're right on the threshold of getting this state really going in a much, much better direction. Do you think it's realistic that it's going to be at least another year before we really chip into that unemployment? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's going to take some time. At the State House, Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report.